We do begin this morning in Washington, where a lot of folks are focused on the state visit there by Chinese President Hu Jintao. And we do want to point out that CBS News is just learning a little bit later today, we should be learning of an agreement between the U.S. and China for improved cooperation on nuclear security issues. So we'll be keeping an eye on that for you. Just one of the things we expect to come out of this visit. President Obama tonight will host a state dinner in his honor, in the honor of uh, China's President Hu Jintao there. It's the first one in 13 years for a Chinese leader. It's also a clear sign of just how important this visit and this relationship is between the two world leaders. Last night, President Obama held a very unusual private dinner for President Hu. So just what is the administration hoping to gain from the state visit? I spoke earlier with Secretary of State Hillary Clinton. The state visit, as we know, gives China the recognition and really a little bit of the pomp and circumstance that it's been craving. Uh, it's now the world's second largest economy, obviously a crucial partner for the U.S. I know it's a relationship that the administration has been working on, but you also said very clearly last Friday that distrust lingers on both sides. How will this state visit uh, work to eliminate some of that distrust? You know, Erica, it's a great question, and I have to say that even though we live in a world of uh, virtual reality a lot of the time, where people communicate, uh, you know, with the flick of a mouse or the touch of a, a screen, we believe strongly that you still need to have face-to-face -face relationship building opportunities, and I've seen that so clearly in the last two years as Secretary of State. Uh, we're proud to welcome uh, President Hu Jintao for a state visit uh, to Washington. It is uh, the continuation of uh, two years of the Obama administration's efforts to build a positive, cooperative, and comprehensive uh, relationship with China. And we think it is one of the most consequential uh, relationships for the future of our country and the future of the world. We do not always see the world the same way, which is to be expected, since we have very different histories and cultures. But it is imperative that we work not only government to government, but people to people, uh, to build a foundation of better understanding and trust so that where we can agree, we will do so and work together. One of those major issues, and, and especially for a lot of the American people as they look at this, is, of course, human rights. China, though, has repeatedly dismissed U.S. calls for greater human rights as interference. How do you work on that issue of human rights while also balancing out the need for working on things like trade agreements? What I believe is that the United States must always stand for our values, and therefore we must raise human rights, which remains at the heart of American diplomacy. But we cannot uh, say that that's all we're going to be talking about, or the fact that we disagree there eliminates the need for us to work together on climate change, North Korea, Iran, and so much else. You, you mentioned North Korea there, and the Korean Peninsula seemed to be on the brink of war not very long ago, with, of course, uh, the attack on a South Korean island and then South Korea's military uh, maneuvers that we saw. Uh, will, will you and, and will the president be speaking with, and as you speak with your counterpart, your Chinese counterpart, asking them to be more firm when it comes to North Korea? Well, we are engaged in an ongoing discussion uh, with the Chinese, as well as the South Koreans and the Japanese uh, and the Russians, uh, all who are members of the so-called six-party talks, about what we must do in order to restrain uh, North Korea's nuclear program and, and uh, end its provocative behavior. Uh, China was uh, uh, helpful in uh, this last uh, uh, series of incidents in helping to restrain uh, North Korea and responding to what was a legitimate uh, exercise by South Korea to demonstrate its uh, defensive uh, capacity. And we're going to continue to work with our, our Chinese counterparts. You know, the fact is that uh, a stable, nuclear-free Korean peninsula is in both Chinese and American interests. Uh, lastly, before we let you go, of course, the campaign season is, is already heating up for 2012. <laughs> I know you said that, that you plan to stay in your current position, uh, at least through this first term. Any thoughts, though, on ever looking again at perhaps running for an elected office? No, I've been very clear that uh, I think that uh, is, uh, you know, part of my very uh, happy past um, where <laughs> I had a wonderful, uh, you know, wonderful opportunity to serve the people of New York, to uh, work uh, beside uh, my husband when he was president, to run for president myself. Uh, but I feel very good about the service I'm rendering now and, and uh, will continue to do that. And what about those rumors that we could see you over at the uh, Department of Defense? 
As far as I know, those are just rumors. I'm happy where I am, and I'm doing everything I can to persuade Bob Gates to stay as long as he can where he is. <laughs> All right. Secretary Clinton, thanks so much for your time this morning. We appreciate it. Great to talk to you, Erica. Thank you.